Hi, hello there, and welcome back to Steam It With Steve. Today we're going to go through how to do equivalent fractions, making sure that our numerators and our denominators sort of work together. So let's jump on in. So when we deal with um, equivalent fractions, my personal preference is to deal with pizza. Um, makes the whole concept a lot easier to sort of understand the parts and how those slices of pizza sort of line up together. So the learning objectives today is we're going to understand the concepts of equivalent fractions. We're then going to identify and create equivalent fractions and then apply those equivalent fractions into a real life scenario. So when you're creating equivalent fractions, it's pretty simple. You're basically trying to balance the top and the bottom and then reducing it down as small as possible. Now, sometimes you might want to try and make it out of 100 as well. So when we're dealing with percentages, but that's down the track. But the idea of equivalent fractions is we want to be able to find that this fraction is exactly the same as this fraction or the proportionality between the top and the bottom is the same. That's another way of thinking about it. So if you look at 10 over 35, you can divide both of those by five, which is why the equivalent to the same as if you had a fraction where it had two out of seven. Okay, so that's another way of looking at it. So again, I personally like looking at fractions. So if you have a whole pizza, that's the same as having one out of one. If you had half a pizza, it's the same as one out of two, a third, one out of three, a quarter, and so on. Now, because these have different denominators, they're a bit harder to merge together. So that's why we, we deal with equivalent fractions, because we want to make sure that when we're adding fractions together, that that denominator is going to be exactly the same or equivalent. So simple one, if you had a, a quarter of a pizza plus a quarter of a pizza, hopefully you've picked up that it is exactly the same as half a pizza when you're looking at those two merged together. And But then the, the trick here, this is the same as saying this is the same as two quarters of a pizza. So when we look at the numerator and the denominator as well, we're looking at the different parts. So the numerator is the top part. So in this case here, we've got four parts selected out of the seven parts down the bottom. So the numerator is always on the top. So it's the number on the top and the denominator is the uh, the denomination or how many parts that you're breaking um, this, this fraction into. So if we had eight out of 12, if we want to reduce that down, if we imagine that, that's the eight um, bits that are selected out of the 12 parts. So here's the whole thing. We've chopped it up into 12 little separate parts that are exactly the same. That's exactly the same then as if you have eight out of 12, we can then group and use um, equivalent fractions. So what can you divide the, both the top and the bottom by here? And we can divide them both by four. So we divide the, both the top and the bottom by four. We then can now see that eight over 12 is exactly the same as two thirds. So that's basically the pattern that we're looking for here. So if you know your times tables, this should make it a little bit easier because you're just gonna look for pattern recognition between the top and the bottom. So just pause the video, have a go at these ones. So the first one, you can see that it's been broken up into eight parts. So then there's two parts selected out of the eight. So that's the same as two out of eight. And then if we reduce that, it's the same as a quarter. For the next one, you can see it's the same as six out of eight, which then gives us the same as um, three quarters with this part around here. And then this next one here, you can see that there's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine parts. And then we've selected one, two, three, four, five, six parts out of that. So you've got six out of nine. But then as a fraction, that's also equivalent to two thirds because we can divide both the top and the bottom by three. And the last one, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and we've got two out of the six, which then can be then reduced down to a third. Cool. So just pause the video, have a go at these ones. So 10 out of 12, you can reduce that down to 5, 6. 5 out of 15, you can reduce that down to a third. 2 out of 10, you can reduce down to 1 fifth. 2 out of um, 4, you can reduce down to a half. So when we're simplifying fractions, whatever you do to the bottom, you must always, always do to the top. So if you divide the bottom by 2, divide the top by 2. And it's a pretty simple unison so that they're equivalent. So if we have the original example, eight out of 12, we can divide both the top and bottom by four. So then that gives us the two out of three. If we had 10 out of 35, we've seen that before, we divide the top and the bottom by five. 
So we're going to divide them both by 5, and we get 2 out of 7. So then 6 out of 21, we can divide both the top and the bottom by 3, which then gives us the 2 out of 7, and we've seen that before as well. So now have a go at these ones. Now this is where it's a little bit different. We want to write so that the denominator is out of 40. Okay, so see if you can work out what you need to do the bottom to get to 40, and then whatever you do at the bottom, you must do to the top. Awesome. So the first one, we've got 5, and we've got to work out how to get to 40. So we've got times it by 8. So 5 times 8 is 40. So 3 8 then is 24. For the next one, we've got to times 2 by 20. So then we're going to times the top by 20, which gives us um, 20. The next one, we're going to times the bottom by 10, and then we're going to times the top by 10. And the last one, we're going to divide by um, 3. So we're going to need to top, divide the top by 3, which gives us 12. Another way of ex um, explaining this is you can keep using the sieve. So we can divide this by 2. Then we can divide it again by 2. And then we get th um, to our 3. So if you ever get stuck and you can see they're both even numbers, you just keep dividing by 2 until you can't do that anymore. So if you don't know your times table so well, that is another approach if you um, are getting a little stuck with this. So then the magic numbers that we need to remember, hopefully remember from the highest common factor. If we're reducing a fraction, if we remember 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, you'll always get it down to the most smallest fraction. Uh, fraction. So those are the prime numbers that we talked about before. And if we use those, it does help a whole heap. So continually divide by these numbers until you can't divide anymore. So um, if we had 16 over 40, what we could do is divide both the top and bottom by 2. So that gives us um, 8 out of 20. Then we can divide them again by 2. So that gives us 4 out of um, 10. And then we can divide it by 2 again. And then we get 2 out of 5. Now, this is the approach you use if you can't you know, see your times tables. So in this case, if you looked at both of these and you don't know your 8 times tables, for example, um, you can do this approach. But if you do know your times tables, please just use them. So you can divide this by 8 and you can divide this by 8. That's the biggest thing that can go into both of them. So you just do it. So you can't divide by 2. And then 2 out of 5 can't divide by 3. Can't divide by 5. And then it can't divide by 7. So then you're all good. Have a go at this one. I don't mind which way you do. Now, hopefully you've picked up. Um, this is the same as a clock. So it's the same as 3 quarters of an hour. If you saw 45 out of 60. Um, and that's why a lot of um, teachers in the primary school will teach you time. Because then you can start seeing those type of patterns and linking it. So in this case here, we can't divide them both by 2. right? But we can divide them both by 3. Which gives us 15 out of 20. We can then also divide them by um, 5. Which then, then gives us the 3 out of 4. Alternatively, you could just divide them both by 15. If you, did, if you could see that pattern. Okay, but that's another trick. Cool. So just pause the video, have a go at these ones. Awesome. So the first one, 8 out of 20, you should have got that as 2 out of 5. And the next one, 15 out, 25 out of 15, simplifies down to 5 out of 3. Divide both the top and bottom by 5. So just pause the video, have a go at these ones. So for the first one, um, you should have got 6. The next one, you should have got 20 and then 200. For B, you should have got an out of 14, then 40 on the top, and then 140 on the bottom. For C, you should have 1 on the top, 6 on the bottom, and then 42. And then D, you should have an 8 on the bottom, 3 on the top, and then 20 on the bottom. And then which of the following fractions are equivalent to 2 thirds? Well, 4 6 are 20 out of 30, and then 10 out of 15. Then rewrite the following um, fractions of the denominator of 24. So times in by 8 for the first one. So you've got 8 out of 24. Then this one you would be times in by um, 3. So you've got 6 out of 24. This one would be times in by 12. So you've got 12 out of 24. And the last one you're going to be times in by 2. So that's why it's 10 out of 24. So a little bit trickier. A um, bit more of a challenge question. So just pause the video and see if you can do this one. So Aunt Sue baked a batch of cookies and shared three-tenths of them with her neighbour. If she gave 15 cookies to her neighbour, how many cookies had Aunt Sue baked all together? So if three-tenths 
and we know that she cooked, gave 15 cookies to the neighbor. What we can do is we know that she's given three tenths of them to the neighbor. So it's the same as the top is going to be 15. So you could say that's 15. And what have we times three by to get to the 15? Well, and hopefully you've picked up that that would be five. So then we would do 10 times five. And then we could see that 50 cookies were cooked all together. So she's given three tenths of them to the neighbor. And there were 15 actual cookies. There was 50 cookies that were given all together in total. So she baked 50 cookies. So that's it for me. There is a Dr. Frost that goes with this um, for equivalent fractions. And hopefully that will sort of expand that for you. Um, if you did enjoy the video, please give us a like and subscribe down below as it does help with the YouTube algorithm and getting the message across that math is for everyone. Um, that's it from me. Hopefully you've enjoyed. And yeah, see you next time on Steam with Steve. Adios.